used to work with somebody, um, we'll call him Eric for the purposes of this conversation. And something that I found about Eric was that when we were in collaborative ideation based conversations, he generally didn't listen very much to the people in the room that were not his friends. And so we had a session where he was like, let's all get together. Let's throw out as many ideas as we possibly can for um, a, a, a video that we were putting together. And in the room was him, uh, his friend, two other people, and myself. And we're just throwing out as many ideas as we possibly can. I wrote down every idea, who said which idea. And at the end of coming up with probably about 10 or 11 ideas, he said, you know what, um, it looks like we haven't really come up with as many as we need today, so let's come back and have another meeting. And I was like, can you let me know what ideas you think that we've left with at the end of this meeting? And the ones that he reflected back to me were the two or three ideas that he and his friend had come up with. And so in that moment, I subtly pulled out my cell phone and started texting the other two people in the room to say, this is so typical him. I knew that this was going to happen. I made a list of who said what. I know that there's so many more ideas than this. When we're talking about that idea of not caring and not challenging, I wasn't caring. I wasn't having the honest conversation that I needed to have with him about how that experience felt. And I wasn't challenging. I was getting my frustrated energy out, but I wasn't putting it in any sort of a productive direction. And I was frustrated about the fact that he was creating this chasm of the people he was friends with and the people that he wasn't. But what I was doing was actually strengthening that and making it more intense by making more of this us versus them with this private chat that I was having with other people.